What's up, everyone? Punchy back with Higurashi When They Cry, Chapter 2, What's Nagashi? Alright, back on the third recording of the day. We are, oh no, we're at the police office, and Congressman Sonazaki has burst in, uh, threatening people, and uh, wants to yell at Oishi for wanting to search the Furuti Shrine. Let's see. I'm angry now, so you're not going getting off the hook that easily. Oh man, it is literally one sentence before the end of that uh, and uh, that tip, and I cut it off. That's pretty funny. All right, back to it. Let's hit a quick, quick save. All right. I saw a ceiling I was familiar with. Though I was groggy from sleep, I did notice that I was in my futon, like I was every morning. I looked at my clock, and despite having turned in so late last night, I had awoken with precisely the same amount I always did. At oh, the same moment. I'm so low on sleep, but I guess you can really get up at the same time every day. The secrets of the human body never cease to amaze me. If I went back to sleep like this, I would definitely not be waking up again. I spurred myself on and slipped out of my futon. Mom asked me about last night at breakfast. Apparently, we too had gotten a call asking if we knew where Rika Chan Satoka were, and Mom vaguely understood that something serious was happening. So then you were out late last night with all your friends looking for them? Until about three, I think. Yeah. Did you find them? Riku chan Satoko chan I mean. Crunch. I really bit into my toast. It really didn't have any taste. We'll put some butter on that. Just then, we heard the chan go I looked up at the clock and saw it was about five minutes past my regular meeting with time with Rena. It was her at the door. Oh, not. Oh, jeez. All right, back. Um, the game. Uh, I don't know. It froze for a bit, so I just had to let it go for him. Good morning. Did you get any sleep? Did you? I think I slept for a few hours. You could probably count them on a chicken's toes, though. <laughs> Rennie seemed pretty sleep, pretty sleep deprived as well. There was something missing from her usual spirit. Are you going to school? Yeah. I think it would be better that way. She said smiling, albeit stiffly. Reno was probably wearing her heart out about those two as well. Even so, she wanted to go to school. If you stay at home today, I think you should be worrying non-stop and sleeping. I don't want that. So let's get to school together. Alright. Wait just a moment. I'll get ready. I was just a little bit happy about Rena mustering that much consideration for me. We went to the place where we'd usually meet up with Mian, but she was nowhere to be found. We were a little bit late today, so we thought she'd be waiting for us. I guess Michan couldn't wake up today, huh? Uh, that's right. For her, it wasn't just yesterday. She was up all night looking for the mayor the night before her last, too. We waited for a bit. Time passed until it got to the point where it was okay for us to go on alone, and we exchanged glances. What do we do? Wait a little longer? At that point, my brain, which had finally been woken up by the morning air, Recalled the ominous words that Uishi-san had left me with last night. The leaders of the three families were disappearing one after the other, and next, it might be the Sonozaki, Sonozaki's leader. 
Could me and have... No, that couldn't be. Let's go. Let's let her sleep for today. Rina gave me a pat on the back. Mian, she's still here, right? Hmm? Did you say something? Oh, nothing. Just talking to myself. Let's get moving. The two of us headed to school by ourselves. On the way, we saw a bunch of our classmates accompanied by their parents. It even looked like some of them were being taken to school by car. Surprisingly, the principal was also standing watch at the school gate. I'd never seen that before. Good morning. Good morning. The principal was bowing to our classmates' guardians. The wooden sword leaning next to him was a little ominous. Meibara-kun, good morning. Ryuga-kun, good morning. G good morning Your teacher has something important to say, so head straight to the classroom. Alright? Rena and I said nothing. The madness that only existed at night was f had finally crawled into the sunlight. That's what it felt like. Oof, this has gotten serious. Everyone's on high alert. Good morning, everyone. The hushed conversation that had been spreading for a while now all disappeared like an illusion the moment our teacher walked in the door. Silence dominated the classroom. The principal came in with our teacher as well. This was clearly not a normal morning. First, the principal has something important to tell everyone. Go ahead, Mr. Principal. The principal cleared his throat and approached the days. I'm sure some of you already know this. The classroom was dead silent. Everyone was staring at Rika Chan and Satoko's empty seats. The principal briefly and simply declared that Rika Chan and Satoko had gone missing. There wasn't a single person in the classroom who didn't already know. There seemed to be many, however, who couldn't accept it as the truth. They'd, it had been confirmed to them now by the principal's words. There were sobs throughout the classroom, and I heard a kid crying. They, they steadily spread throughout the whole room. The big-hearted principal wasn't able to keep his cool either. Okay, everyone, pay attention. From today on, your parents or guardians will be taking you to school. For those of you, who use, for those of you whose parents can do so, you'll be coming here in groups. I made a handout, so read it carefully. Be sure to show it to your parents. Understand? The teacher's voice was a little abrasive. Not even she could conceal the strain she felt from this unprecedented, abnormal situation. They should have just cancelled school today. However, Renan told me that school was already like a nursery for the students whose parents both worked, so some of them wouldn't want school to be cancelled. Well then, let's begin the lesson. Class president? She's absent, I see. Then whoever's on day duty, let me hear it. I'll rise. That feeling of wanting to maintain an, an everyday atmosphere, even if only in school, precisely because our lives had been messed up, was something that I agreed with at that point, at this point. Wow. Ren and Satoko are actually gone. I don't know what to make of it, really. As for the teacher, who had always had her lunch in the staff lounge, she ate in the classroom today. I had to laugh at her curry bento, which was just a rumor until now, but there was nobody to laugh with me. Miranda brought her, her chair and lunch over to my seat. Today, it was only the two of us. The fact that we didn't need to drag any other desks over was sad. I'm sleepy. Yeah. I don't feel like sleeping anymore, though. In fact, I'm jealous of the people that could sleep at a time like this. They've got nerves of steel. <laughs> You're right. I was sleepy this morning, but my drowsiness had dissipated after coming to school and constantly feeling the incredible tension. Rena's bento box didn't have its usual luster. That was to be expected. Rena was up for a long time last night too. She wouldn't have time to make her lunch beforehand. Since it's not like she would have gotten up early this morning. Grab anything you want. 
go ahead. You can admit that my bento is better today. Oh, okay. Then I'll have some. Wow, a chikuo roll with perilla and cheese? That's interesting. No clue what that means. Rena, yours might have ready-made food in it, but um, but it's pretty good too. I realized the two of us were desperately trying to brighten the afternoon mood to its usual level as much as we could. I looked, the class, looked around the classroom. It seemed like we were the only ones trying to do so, surrounded as we were by gloominess. Ooh, 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 ooh. Just the two of us sharing lunch together like this. It's sort of, well, sort of like something. How? Oh. <laughs> Our laughter grew quieter. I was the first one to mess up. Sorry. I mean, well, I'm sorry. No, it's okay. It's not your fault. Our chopsticks both stopped moving. We couldn't keep it up anymore. Rikuchan Satoko. I wonder where they went. Those words might have sounded too miserable. Everyone was thinking it, using roundabout ways to address the topic, but I came right out and said it. I heard Rena catch her breath. Yesterday, while you were gone, I heard a bunch of things, so I'll tell you what I know, okay? Sorry about last night. Go ahead. At that time, since they had arrived for support, Rena was helping the Lady Society cook this miso soup we had. They reported all the information the villagers had gathered, and Verena said she overheard it. They didn't know anything important though, did they? Rikuchan and Satoko went home after school, and then apparently went somewhere on their bikes, but other than that... Mian had told me yesterday. We had no clues. Yeah. The police also said that they probably went out on their bikes to go play somewhere as soon as they got home. If they're going out to play somewhere on their bikes right after getting home, then they might have gone into town. So I guess they concluded they disappeared while in Okinomiya. The police were saying how they were going to expand their search to Okinomiya in the morning. In town. It makes sense why we couldn't even couldn't find them even though we were we searched all of Hinozawa then. Still, something didn't fit. I had no basis for thinking that. Just a gut feeling. I revealed something to Rika-chan that was likely very important to her that day. Then, Rika-chan told me to leave it to her. And then, uh, what did she say? Oh right, if she didn't work hard, then something might bad happen to the dog too. I think. With all the talks of dogs and cats, I still didn't have the faintest idea what she really meant. But, it might have been Rika-chan's way of saying this was a race against time. Damn it. I'd selfishly push my anxiety, anxiety on Rikachan and tried to run away. When I thought about it, I shouldn't have run back then. I should have asked her more about the dogs and the cats. The more I think back on it, I really screwed up. Anyway, I don't think Rikachan was in a situation where she would just go off to play somewhere. Of course, I didn't have any evidence or conviction to base that on. It was just a hunch. I don't think... I don't think she'd go into town. You think so too, Punchikun? I agree. Yukuchan Satoko-chan must have disappeared in Hinamazawa. I looked back at Rena, startled. I could hear the conviction in those words. Without replying to my gaze, she took the bento box and went to the hallway. Where are we going? I'm going to go rinse this out. She timed that in a way that broke off the conversation. Suddenly, I got the feeling next thing she had to say would be hard to say aloud in the classroom. I hurriedly grabbed my bento box and followed her. Rana didn't go to the kitchenette, but rather to the water fountains out back, where students seldom went. The water flowed down onto her bento boxes. During that time, Rana didn't say a word. Then. After making sure there was no other students around, she finally opened her mouth to speak. The whole thing about Rikuchan Satokuchan going to town to play, and then disappearing. What? That didn't make sense for some reason, so I decided to investigate myself a little bit. Who did you ask? What did you ask them about? 
It asked the Lady Society all kinds of things. There was a lot of tofu in the miso soup yesterday, remember? The old lady from Tomita's Tofu Soup came too. Tomi uh, the shop. Tomita Tofu Shop. Oh, I remember. That was one of the stores on the road leading to the hospital. Those huge lumps of tofu dancing in the bathtub. Like cistern. Always looking nice and refreshing. The old lady says she remembers Satoko chan stopping by to buy tofu there on her way home from school. Tofu? Well, it's on the way home, right? How is that a clue? Just listen. Do you remember when we went to Rika chan's house? Rena stepped away from the sinks and spread her arms wide to recreate the, sp the space of Rika chan's room. There was a pot in her gas cooker. And there was miso soup in it. I think there was probably about half of it inside. The rest was in the refrigerator. They must have been planning on making chilled tofu. It was on a plate and, pla and plastic wrap. As Ren explained, she walked around as if she were really going through Rikachan's room. Still, Rena, why does this matter? Punchikun, when you make miso soup, you put the tofu in last. That means Rikachan or Shitoko-chan. Whoever was cooking was standing there, making it, uh, making it, up until right on. Oh, Jesus Christ, was standing there making it up until right before dinner time. Right up until dinner time. Wasn't everyone saying that their bikes weren't around, so they must have gone somewhere to play by themselves? The trash in the countertop bin was put in there uh, really awkwardly too. Rikuchan makes most of the food and lunches, but occasionally Sotoko-chan does it too. So Sotoko-chan was cooking that night. So that means that Sotoko at least didn't go, go go somewhere to play. She was preparing dinner? Yeah. Then I took a look at the rice cooker and there was rice for two still in there. So she made dinner for both of them, but neither of them ate it. Is that it? Rena nodded. So next, we looked in the fridge. There was some chilled tofu made from the other half that they bought. That's not all either. There were a whole bunch of plates and s with side dishes for dinner, and all of them were in a plastic wrap. You usually, plastic wrap things so that you can have leftovers for the next day. My mom does it all the time too, using them in breakfast or lunch. That's right. You use plastic wrap to save leftovers for later. So the fact that they were in the fridge means that they didn't plan on eating them that night at least. Um, is that what it means? Punchikun, think a little harder. Their dinner was totally untouched and wrapped up. What do you think that means? Um, well, that means they didn't need to eat dinner anymore. So they would have gone out to eat or ordered takeout? It must have been really sudden too. If they decided to do that beforehand, they wouldn't have made anything, but there was dinner for the two of them. That means that when Satoko-chan was making their dinner, they really d thought they were going to eat it until right before they didn't. So then, the theory about the two of them going out to play and dis disappearing is wrong! Yep, they disappeared right after making dinner and right before they ate it. Probably around 7 o'clock. Where would you have gone at a time like that by themselves without eating? That's obviously where this is leading. Punchikun, do you remember? On their fold out table, there were things like soy sauce and a chopstick holder. It might have been something like that. I didn't remember. The container for the soy sauce. It was empty. There wasn't even a drop left. Chilled tofu wouldn't taste good without it. So I looked under the sink for the larger bottle of soy sauce they have. You sure know a lot about where they keep stuff. <laughs> I've been to Rika-chan's house and cooked for them before. Rena cleared her throat. Her face returned to a seri returning to a serious expression. Then when I opened the cabinet, the big bottle of soy sauce wasn't there at all. It wasn't there? What, what does that mean? Everything I'm going to say from here on is just Rena's idea. So please listen until the end without saying anything. Last night, Satoko was making dinner like normal. Rikuchan usually watched TV until the food was ready, so she was probably lying down watching a variety show or something. 
Stoka put the tofu in the miso, and right when dinner was about to re get be ready, she noticed that they were out of soy sauce. So Rika-chan, who had nothing to do, brought the big bottle of soy sauce to a, um, to a neighbor's house to borrow theirs. Hmm. I don't really know my neighbors that well. Would people be willing to just give her soy sauce? Yeah. It's not all uncommon in Hinamazawa. Especially for Rika, who everyone loves. So Rika-chan rode her bike out to get some soy sauce. No matter how long Sotoka waited though, Rika-chan didn't come back. So then Sotoka-chan called, called up the house where Rika-chan was going. Would Rika happen to be imposing on you? Something like that. Then, them, the other people, hmm, must reply with something like this. We have plenty of food here, so you should come too, Sotoko-chan. Rika-chan has already eaten. I think that's how they called her out there. Sotoko called Rika a few names in private and wrapped up the dinner she made for them. She put it in the fridge so she could use it for breakfast and lunch the next day. Then Sotoko got her on bike too and headed for the house where Rika-chan was. Hmm. Detective Rena over here? Okay, but this is already pretty strange. You don't normally make so much food that you can give it to people who suddenly arrived at your house. A veteran housewife would never normally make so much food that she could feed two extra people. Could it have just been a coincidence that they made too much? It's still unthinkable. Rena flatly denied me. Since Rika-chan knew that Satoka-chan had worked really hard to make dinner for them, didn't she? No matter what kind of food she was offered, she wouldn't let Satoka-chan's dinner go to waste. This is all only circumstantial evidence and Rena's guesswork. Even so, it was all extremely convincing. It was only the only ray of hope we had to topple this situation bereft of clues. Then Rena, where did Rika-chan go to get soy sauce? That was the heart of it. It would have to be somewhere she'd be comfortable with asking for soy sauce. And somewhere Satoka wouldn't think it suspicious that she'd be invited for dinner. So who was it? Rena slowly shook her head. That's all for Rena's guesses. Oh, Rena! Keep it in us on hold there. And that's where we will end it for today, guys. Um, like the mysteries are building. This is weird, like, I keep saying it's weird, but let me explain. It's like, the first chapter, we saw Punchy alone, we knew that he was constantly being watched, and I, I guess it was just more that he was alone in Hinamazawa being targeted by essentially everyone. Um, this time though, I can't, I can't really tell what's gonna happen to Punchy. I mean, could there be a good ending? I don't It doesn't feel like there is, but the fact that it's so much more in depth, it's weird. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe, and I will see you next time. Bye bye.